All right, so staying in the NFL, we got some fresh out the press, exciting NFL free agency 2022 news. All right, so um, I'm going to rattle off a couple of guys here, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jay, and he's going to let me know what moves, you know, excited him, what moves didn't excite him. Um, a couple of the big-time moves, we had um, J.C. Jackson, one of the top corners in the league, go for the Patriots to the Chargers for five years, uh, 80, $82.5 million. Um, Carton Davis decided to re-sign with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, he resigned back for three years, $45 million. Brandon Sheriff, the um, the, the the guard there and, uh, for the Washington Commanders, I almost said the wrong thing, the Washington Commanders, he leads them go go over to Jacksonville, the Jacksonville Jaguars for three years, forty nine and a half million dollars. Then you got um, Marcus Williams, the safety from the Saints, signs with the Baltimore Ravens for five years, seventy million dollars. Um, one of my personal favorites here, uh, Mister um, Smoke Smoke him if you got him, Randy Gregory over here, um, edge rusher out of Dallas. Uh, decides to leave, uh, you know, leave the star and go to the 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 Denver Broncos also for five years, seventy million as, as rumor. Um, Devontae Campbell, linebacker uh, from Green Bay, resigns with Green Bay for five years, fifty mil, and then um, one more. I take uh, Christian Kirk, wide receiver from the Arizona Cardinals. Um, he leaves the Cardinals. He also go to the Jaguars four years for $72 million. I'm going to tell you right now before I hand this over, Jay, if I had to tell you one that I thought was wildly outrageous, it's going to be Christian Kirk. But there's neither here nor there. Um, what stood out to you from free agency? What What do you think was like a, a big reach? What did you think was um, reachable? Or so what did you think was solid? And then what – what um free agency did you see that you thought was like is underrated? So let me repeat that again because I kind of brought that up. A reach, solid, and what was underrated? Oh, that's a that's a lot of questions. I'll I'll try to answer them. And if I don't, please uh please let me know because a, <laughs> a lot of stuff to get to and I'll try try to be brief. But you know, uh you know, Jacksonville's been grabbing a lot of headlines this offseason. They had a lot of money to spend. They 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 using it. They they looking like New England last year. I, I do have to say though, and I know that you know the old our old Jacksonville correspondent. He's like you know after seeing the the likings of Laquan Treadwell and Tavon Austin and you know some of these guys catch passes like well, yeah, I'd take anything. So I I get that. Um, but four years, seventy-two million for Kirk. That's drink. That's that's one money. That's why I receive a one money. And I haven't yeah. seen, and I haven't seen anything from Christian Kirk that leads me to believe he's a number one worthy. Need need I remind you, drink that last year when uh, DeAndre Hopkins did not play, that Cardinals offense was wildly different, and they 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 struggled. And so. I, I don't know about that. I, I, the Zay Jones thing, I mean, I mean, he started his career in Buffalo, was pretty much a non-factor, and he over with the Raiders, and he seemingly got, got going late, had some playoff success, or, you know, I don't know, man. But it's, what, it's seven years, $96 million for those two guys. I think the Evan Ingram thing could be somewhat interesting because I just have this idea that, the Giants are just clueless and they don't know how to use him. And he's he's still, I think he's still an elite talent. Maybe a change of scenery will help him. I think I think uh Brandon Sheriff coming in, that's a big deal because uh Jacksonville's offensive line, I mean, it was everything. Offensive line and the receiving core was just not good. So they clearly had to make upgrades and they have upgraded. There can be no question. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're getting great value. They're not, I'm not sure they're going to get great value for the receivers they've signed. Uh, maybe they try to use uh, one of their – maybe their early second-round pick to to bolster this this receiving core um, again. Uh, I just I just think Jacksonville I – they, I think they did a little bit much. I'm not sure if what they get on the field is going to match what they pay. That, that's my problem, especially with the receiving core. Um, I think a team that – I think the Chargers, I think the Chargers have done well so far. 
um, including bringing back Mike Williams, um, three years, 60 million. We know the trade of Khalil Mack, uh, pair him with Joey Bosa, big deal. And I mean, JC and JC Jackson getting paid a lot of money, but uh, I think he's got 25 picks in four seasons. Uh, he was out. He's been outstanding the last two years. Uh, ever since seemingly he's really been in the start lineup. Um, he's kind of taken the league by storm. He's definitely one of the best cornerbacks um, in football. Be interesting to see how Brandon Staley uses him. He had Jalen Ramsey with the Rams. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But I think um, uh, Sebastian Joseph Day, even that looks like a good value signing. So um, I think I think the Chargers have made out really well. I think a team that's um, perhaps a little bit under the radar as far as where I'm going right now. I think my I think Miami's done pretty well, and I don't and I think it's you know some names that don't really jump off the jump uh, off the page at you. I think uh, I think Cedric Wilson. You know, a lot of people talk about Amari Cooper leaving Dallas. Cedric Wilson got a lot of time last season, and he was and he was impactful when he played. So I think getting him as another weapon for Tua. Um, if he if he's gonna be the quarterback, I assume he is. I don't. I mean, it's Bridgewater that they signed too, so that doesn't that doesn't scare me that much. Right. Uh, I think Cedric. I think Cedric Wilson. I think that's a name to definitely keep an eye on. Uh, that they needed more help at running back. I mean, I'm sorry, Miles Gaskin is just not doing it for me. Uh, Chase Edmonds is a guy who can do it uh, as a runner, and he's electric uh, in the passing game. We know Tua. Tua uh, does a lot of short passing. Edmonds will probably get a lot of work there. So I think I think Miami is another. I think Miami maybe a little bit under the radar for me. I think they've made out well, even though the names don't jump off the page. And then um, look, I'd be uh, I'd be remiss if I did not just mention uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers and uh, Mitchell Trubisky. Um, <laughs> drink, drink, we. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 knew that we had to do something. We knew because Big Ben's gone, and you know what are we gonna do now? You you're not selling us on Mason Rudolph no more. I'm sorry, right. and they're obviously not. But uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, look, we talked about like the Giants were like linked to Mitch Trubisky, and we're like, you you're joking. Like this isn't serious. And now Pittsburgh, two years, fourteen million dollars. Uh drink i ain't i ain't seen nothing from mr trubisky i mean since what 2018 that one year that it was cool and they won a division and matt Nagy looked like a coach ever since then like it's been downhill to the point where uh trubisky was a backup last year didn't play at all and matt Nagy is now a quarterback's coach so that tells you all you need to know about that but somehow pittsburgh's gonna do this I don't, uh, that's, that seems dicey. Now, I guess the argument is, can they, you know, build enough of a, can they, do they have enough of a foundation? Do they have, they got, they're going to have a great defense. I'm sure they're hoping for that. Um, they'll definitely be well coached with Terrell Austin and Brian Flores and Mike Tomlin, for God's sake. And then they're, they're going to have good weapons and, uh, and you got, you got Najee Harris. So, as long as they can get that offensive line, they utilize his legs. I mean, can can I talk myself into believing in this? So up to a point, but um, when you look at it at face value and you say Trubisky Pittsburgh, it's it's a head scratcher. So if I was okay, I wasn't even going. Yeah, yeah, I was. All right, yeah. Listen, I thought Mr. Trubisky was going. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't say something, right? Like. This dude here. I thought I would. I thought he was going to the the Giants. When he was going to the Giants, I was like, okay, Brian Dayball. Maybe he figured yep. out something with Mr. Trubisky that we we have yet to really see, and he can get something out of him. So I was like, okay, I can get that. I can because I could definitely see him challenging. Um, Oh, Daniel Jones for the starting job, you did. But then when he signed with Pittsburgh, I'm like, well, is Pittsburgh holding tryouts? Like, don't they still got – so it's your biscuit. Don't they still got Dwayne Haskins on the roster? Then Mason Rudolph? I'm like, what are we doing here? It's This joint sound like the, the, the dog on Salvation Army. Sound like the Goodwill. Any unwanted goods go in this basket right here. Like, I just, I don't know. 
I just don't know how to feel about that that quarterback room in Pittsburgh right now, man. It just makes you wonder. Hey, Big Ben, maybe, maybe I don't know. So to to get back to my original question before Mister Biscuit threw me off, um, so the the pick that I thought was a reach is Christian Kirk. Let's go ahead and call it what it is: four years, seventy-two million dollars. He was like at best a slot receiver for the Cardinals at best, and I mean, you know, these scouts get paid a lot of money, but these are the same scouts that didn't know Jameis Winston needed laser eye surgery to see. So I don't, I don't know about this one, Chief. We'll see. Maybe this is what he needed on first start. He's getting paid like a one, so you assume he's going to be somewhat in a one role. We'll see. Maybe that's what he needed. But I'm just tell you, I've been following this young man since he played for Texas A&M. And I'm talking about the good Texas A&M under um, uh, Kevin Sumlin when he had him popping. Um, and I don't know. We'll see. Um, a pick that I thought was, in my opinion, that I liked was Randy Gregory. I, um, I think – the thing about Randy Gregory was this. He couldn't stay on the field because for his love of the Mary Jane. Now, Mary Jane is legal, or at least it's not testable in the NFL anymore. One thing I learned about illegal substance that turned into legal substance, they don't get, you know, um, people as hype when they're legal as they do when they're illegal. When they're illegal, everybody want a piece of it because it's illegal. The minute they make it legal, eh. all right, that was fun while it lasted. So I would not be surprised to see a um, second gear out of Randy Gregory around this time. You know, he came back, he played very good for the for the Dallas Cowboys. When, it, the thing was, when he was on the field, he played, I thought he played outstanding. I thought he was a good player. It was just you had to keep him on the field. He was suspended every year for at least half of the year. You gonna pencil that in. Now, you know, he go do what he do. You know, he takes that NFL level drug test. Oh, we good? All right, see you at practice. Um, so I think Randy Gregory was the, the on the Monday. And then underrated was um I, I he hasn't signed yet, I don't think. But I went with Bobby Wagner, um, the the former Seattle uh, linebacker. I'm not sure. Has he signed? I haven't heard anything on him. Okay, yet. I just make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, he hasn't signed yet, but I, I I think I got a good feeling of the team he's gonna sign with, um, which seems like it's a good possibility it could be the Cowboys. And if he was to go and become the the starting line, middle linebacker for the Cowboys, um. I do think that's a very good thing for the Cowboys because now you get to move Parsons to the edge where he's probably the best at. I mean, don't get me wrong. My man can play, it seemed like, every position on defense. But I think him coming out the edge is probably the best use of him. Then you alleviate the pressure on Van Der Esch and whoever else you put next to him so they can play more of a free-flowing type of game. And Bobby Wagner is very – keen on what it is Dan Quinn want to do with that scheme as well with the defense. So he can call that scheme up, down, left, and right. I think that would help Dallas defense tremendously. And listen, you just rolled it out. They lost a lot on offense. So they're going to need this defense even more than they needed them in the past because of everything they lost on the offense. So I like the Bobby Wagner. I think that's an unrated move if he go to the Cowboys. I I guess I have to revisit that if he gets signed by somebody else. They're just me on the premise of that. But, yeah, man, th- those was my three moves. That was my um, my reach, my solid, and my underrated. 